Hi everyone, today we're going to start with another block of the course and we're going to talk about dimensionality reduction and in particular this amazing tool called principal component analysis. So as you remember we can classify almost any problem in machine learning answering two questions and today we're going to focus in this part here. We're going to talk about unsupervised problems meaning that we're trying to find patterns or let the data speak or create groups automatically and we're going to play in principle with numerical data. PCA was created by this guy, Hotelling, in 1933, and so it's a pretty old tool, but you can see that this is still very useful today. And some people call PCA like the Swiss Army knife of statistics. But what is PCA? So let me give you a, an intuitive approach. Imagine that you want to take a photograph of Darth Vader, not this nice guy, but the badass in the movies. And imagine that you can choose an angle to take the photograph. So the question that PCA is trying to answer is this one. What angle would you choose to maximize the number of details captured in the picture? So let's play a little bit with this photograph. Okay, what about that? Do you think this photograph is capturing all the information relevant to Darth Vader? I would say no. What about this one? Okay, this neither. Okay, you can see here that you're not capturing most of the details. Okay, this is much better because now you can see part of the helmet and part of the shoot, but probably you would choose something like this. You can see the cape, the lightsaber, the details in the suit, the helmet, and even the hand. Okay, so we're going to call this projection the principal component. Why is that? Because it maximizes information, it maximizes variability. So if you take a look at this, for instance, there is not so much variability. So the range of variability is small, and this position is even worse. Okay, you cannot see anything in that picture. So principal component analysis is basically trying to change for the original axis to some projections of, of this picture in which information is maximized one axis at a time. Okay, this is an amazing example of the use of PCA for image recognition. In this case, you have this picture. Pictures are also vectors of information, so are like data sets, in the sense that it, each of these pictures is going to be a column in a data set. And to build that column, basically, you have to, to cover this image going in this direction, and so on and so forth. And now you can define principal components, and I'll tell you how to calculate those in, in the future. So this is the direction of maximum variability. What you can see here is essentially that a face is something with some dark parts in, in here and there, which are the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. The second component is basically capturing more details about the eyes, but also details about the hair. And now the first principal component could be something like, I don't know, what, what is the color of your skin or whatever. Uh, and you can see that you can reconstruct an image by using superposition of these principal components. So you could say that a face is something like the, okay, the, the, the overall location of the eyes, the nose, and, and the mouth, and then the rotation of the face, and then the details of the hair, and so on and so forth. So this is actually not a real picture, so this is the superposition of, in this case, 10 photographs. And the difference between a couple of people is the, the weight that we are giving to each of these components. So this guy in the photograph is going to have different weights, different coefficients here, but in the end, basically, you are doing a dimensionality reduction because you're transforming any face, in this case, into a set of predefined eigenfaces and a collection of numbers. Well, this sounds like magic, but this is not going to work in all cases. So in order to work, you, you need to have a situation like this on the right, in which you have high redundancy between variables. In this case, all the variables are completely uncorrelated, and in this case, you have a strong correlation. So X and Y are somehow arbitrary axes to describe the data. And maybe if we use this direction, the direction of the, of the red arrow, maybe we are in a position to describe the data more accurately. So in the next videos of the series, we're going to learn a lot of things. We're going to learn what is PCA, how to perform PCA, and the most important part, how to identify hidden patterns and how to reduce dimensionality of the data. You have a couple of books which are really good for this, for this topic. I actually love this book by Hassan Le Ampage. And it's basically a tutorial using the library Factomine R, which is the library that I'm going to use. And there is a lot of examples there, a lot of intuitive explanations, and a lot of data sets included in the library. And there is also a Spanish edition of the book, if you're interested.